Hello, welcome all. Today we are going to talk about migrating MariaDB cluster to ARM. So we will try to first understand is it worth migrating MariaDB cluster to ARM and if yes then what are the challenges or what how you can do it and what challenges you would face. So with that let's get started. My name is Pranal Bauskar. That's quick intro about me. I have been working in MySQL space for more than a decade now. In past, I've worked with multiple organizations like Percona, Oracle, MySQL, or Yahoo Labs, Kickfile, Teradata. I've been currently working with Huawei as part of the open source DB group, where I'm driving the MySQL on ARM initiative, which includes all kinds of open source databases. And we are trying to make the complete ecosystem <laughs> optimal for ARM. And I do blog, that's my blogging site. So with that quick intro, let's jump to our today's agenda. First, we will try to see a uh, growing ARM ecosystem. Then we will try to understand what is the state of MariaDB on ARM. And then we will jump to our main topic of why consider migration and how to migrate. And of course, we'll talk about open issues and challenges. I'm sure you have all heard about ARM. ARM processors have been widely used in different verticals. Uh, the primary being uh, mobile and network equipments, but they are very commonly now found even in smart home appliances, automobiles, defense and space equipments. Something which has started gaining traction is a use of ARM processor in high performance computing. Now all this was made possible in last couple of years. The ARM instances was made available easily through cloud provider. Huawei offers uh, ARM instances, Amazon offer ARM instances on cloud, Oracle plans to offer it, uh, Apple does offer it in form of desktop uh, through their new uh, M1 chip, Microsoft, uh, there was a news that Microsoft is also working on the ARM chips. So <coughs> the advantage of ARM processors has been they do consume lesser power thereby reducing your total cost of ownership and that's the reason why ARM is gaining so much of traction lately not only on the hardware front even on the um, software front almost all major os provider now provide port for arm with regular releases most of the uh, leading software including mariadb has been ported to arm and there are regular releases of these softwares for arm uh, beyond that, if you look at the developer and programmer interest, a uh, lot of the new generation developers who have already been con uh, connected with the ARM community uh, because they were trying things on uh, kits like Andrino, Raspberry Pi or they were working with for Android uh, are already joining this complete community and they are going to just expand the ARM community further. So overall, it's pretty healthy uh, ecosystem that is getting evolved around ARM. And that's why more and more users and developers and organizations are, uh, you know, realizing the uh, importance of ARM and have started to work towards porting their softwares to ARM. With that quick intro, now let's understand what is the state of MariaDB on ARM. So MariaDB on ARM, <laughs> MariaDB has been releasing packages for uh, MariaDB server on ARM for quite some time now. In fact, MariaDB was leader or uh, the forerunner in this to start releasing packages. Not only does MariaDB release packages, they have accepted quite a good number of optimizations and they have also done uh, self uh, you know, work on optimizations. <laughs> and uh, that way MariaDB server is we can say is pretty uh, kind of optimized for the ARM. Now even today when they do evaluate new feature they given that it is uh, support ARM is, is part of their support uh, already. So they do evaluate this new feature especially the performance feature uh, on ARM with help of community. Uh, currently MariaDB offer packages for uh, distros like CentOS and Ubuntu and uh, you know in upcoming days it, uh, this particular matrix is going to improve further and MariaDB on ARM packages will be offered almost on all the other distros uh, making it on par with other architecture. Of course bug fixes are looked with the same priority like other platforms and performance we are going to talk more about it but on performance front too MariaDB on ARM scales better uh, compared to its other counterpart. Ecosystem in general around MariaDB on ARM is also growing. We'll also again have a, a talk, uh, you know, a small <laughs> slide about it in, in the follow up things. So overall, we can say MariaDB on ARM is complete uh, production ready. And, you know, if user are uh, thinking of evaluating it uh, or probably trying it, I think it's uh, we can say uh, so that it, you know, user can start uh, using it. 
So if you talk about the ecosystem, since database rarely exists in standalone fashion, but server, of course, uh, is the main uh, thing, but there are a lot of other supporting components. So server, MariaDB server, as we know, uh, is already offered. Uh, HA solutions, if you are looking for uh, in form of bin log replications or Galera clusters, that also are inherent to the MariaDB server. Maria backup uh, is uh, there are packages available for ARM. Load balancer, proxy SQL, uh, uh, of course, there are packages again available for ARM. Uh, Max scale is missing. Hopefully, by community push, MariaDB will start also uh, port the Max scale on ARM. Uh, PMM uh, community has evaluated it along with Percona engineers too and uh, PMM does work on ARM connectors also is there Percona toolkit most of them are Perl script and just work out of box again community has evaluated them so what is we can say all in all if someone wants to run a full stack uh, ecosystem uh, using only open source software on ARM then is that possible and yes it is possible and from every category we have at least one or two tools or uh, softwares being available and the good part is this is expanding so as of now you see, you may see uh, one tool <laughs> in some categories but maybe in upcoming days you would see more tools getting added now if user do care about running mariadb server in form of uh, let's say orchestration in uh, using kubernetes or docker swarm then of course both of them are also available on arm so, uh, uh, you know, it, it gives a pretty good confidence that any user can actually start running an end-to-end -end system uh, completely on ARM. So, with that uh, quick, uh, you know, discussion about state of MariaDB on ARM, let's now jump to our today's main topic of why consider migration. So, I'm sure when we talk about migration, most of the users, SOP, DevOps would consider that, oh, well, why uh, should we migrate? Uh, because migration, of course, has its own challenges. And then there are a lot of uh, questions like, what if this happens and how do we migrate and all? So, uh, let's understand the motivation behind migration, right? So, uh, the, uh, the biggest motivation here is the cost saving. So ARM is a different processor. So you can actually, if you want to study ARM performance, uh, of course, we are going to talk about both the model, but the model which we are using here is the same cost model or what we call as a CPM. So what we did here is we uh, <laughs> kept the cost same and all other uh, resources same and we allowed the compute power to differ. So for the same cost, we got more two, uh, 2 to 2.5x more cores of ARM. And fortunately, with this extra computing power, MariaDB on ARM was able to scale better. And as you could see, on all the use cases, MariaDB on ARM, has, uh, once it crosses certain scalability point, it has scaled. And uh, in some cases, the difference is almost more than double. That's the magnitude of extra TPS user could get uh, for the same cost just by moving on to ARM. Now, from developer perspective, just, uh, you know, trying to get back to the old model where we actually allow the cost to differ, uh, you know, ARM being cheaper, we all know about it. Uh, but then if we keep the same compute power or we give the same compute power to both the variants and al uh, along with all other same resources and we try to compare the performance, then you would discover that ARM is powerful enough and it is able to be at least on par with um, its variant or in some cases also beat its variant uh, by some significant margin now what it effectively means is that for the reduced cost and which in some uh, on an average uh, it shows that roughly 50 percent less cost you could get the same tps so that extra 50 percent is more like a saving that you could yield out of it now, of course, uh, we have just shown a couple of scenarios. Uh, we have tried it with other scenarios where there is more contention, IO bound and all. Uh, and uh, the picture is same. So what is the message that is coming out and why user should consider ARM is more TPS for same cost. So for the same cost, you can get more TPS. Of course, it uh, turns out to be a saving in one way. Or if you want to look at the other way, more saving for same TPS for same TPS you could get roughly on an average what we are looking at as a 50% uh, cost saving that you could get. So I think that is good enough reason for any user to consider why the, uh, we should consider for migrating to ARM. Now let's understand now that we have convinced ourselves that okay well um, you know migration to ARM could be one of the good thing. We will be saving on significantly saving on the cost front. So how do we migrate? 
Now, we all know that database rarely exist in standalone fashion. So they would exist in some kind of setup wherein it would be either a multi-master setup or a master-slave setup. And of course, there would be other components like backup load balancers, high availability monitoring and all. So it's important that we consider some of these aspects <laughs> when we talk about, uh, especially the setup when we talk about migration. So first, let's talk about multi-master setup. So multi-master solution, which is inherently offered by MariaDB server is through Galera replication, wherein uh, you could actually write and read from any of the uh, nodes, uh, you know, uh, and the protocol that is used for this internal replication is Galera replication protocol. Now, this protocol is completely independent of the architecture or basically what processor is being used. As long as the processor is speaking little Indian, the stream will be able to interpret and you the, it doesn't matter whether you are running the instance on X processor or Y processor. So from that perspective, adding an extra instance of ARM should be a straightforward task. And it is, <clears throat> you can start booting up ARM instances and start joining them or pointing them to the existing cluster. And, uh, you know, uh, they will simply join. Fortunately, um, the uh, solution itself has all the, uh, you know, complexity taken care of, uh, especially with joining of the new nodes and making sure that the dumps is and everything is restored. So if you have a multi-master solution, you just need to boot up a couple of ARM instances and they will be part of your cluster. Now, eventually you can, of course, decommission the existing node. So migration for multi-master is pretty straightforward. Simply start booting and start working. <clears throat> now, there are few challenges that everyone should be aware. And I would say not challenges, but some things to keep in mind. Um, so, of course, if you have, you know, odd, I presume that uh, the standard practice is to have odd number of nodes. You boots another odd number of nodes on ARM. That makes it even if you are going to retain the setup for quite some longer time for evaluation purpose, <clears throat> then that will create an even number of nodes, which is not recommended. So you may need an arbitrator. Overall throughput of the node depends upon the slowest node. In our case, this could be uh, the old node, which are slower node. Because this time when you booted the new nodes, you based on ARM, you may be operating with double the computing power. And then you may be wondering why is my uh, performance not uh, getting increased? And the reason, one of the reason could be that, uh, you know, your old nodes <clears throat> are kind of uh, acting as a critical path. Additional nodes. So when we have three nodes, the commit latency was uh, the commit has to get certified by the other two nodes. But when you have six nodes, the commit has to be certified by five nodes. So the commit latency is also will be a more. So if you are just going to do a comparison, it would not be an apple to apple if uh, you're comparing three node cluster against six nodes. And uh, depending upon which cloud provider are using, what kind of, uh, you know, not even the cloud providers who are offering ARM instances, it may not be available in the same AZ then you may have to boot it in different AZ. So all those aspects needs to get considered. It could, uh, you know, if you, in case you are going for a geo distribution or something, then you there uh, it's possible just that you will have to tune some parameters uh, in your Galera uh, MariaDB setup so that, you know, ensuring that uh, you don't lose uh, because of the geo distribution. So a complete alternative solution to that could be uh, setting up a separate uh, ARM based Galera cluster and linking it with the old cluster using a sync replication. This way there is uh, the drawbacks which we discussed could also be taken care of and uh, this way you could independently evaluate the uh, cluster completely based on ARM. Uh, now, of course, it has its own challenges too, but this is an alternative setup. And uh, when, whenever you have done with your evaluation and you decide to do a complete uh, switchover, then you will have to carry out your uh, master switchover protocol on the standard way. And uh, you then you can continue with your ARM-based cluster. Now, let's talk about master-slave setup. <clears throat> Now, this is a typical setup, even in the previous setup, load balancer is there, but just that uh, show it out explicitly. You would have master, you would have replica, you would have some kind of a, um, you know, MHA kind of solution for uh, eventually if master goes off, then replicas to take over and all these things. Now, uh, booting a extra replica based on ARM is pretty simple. You just, uh, you know, have to restore, take a backup and restore it. Uh, the same uh, thing which you have been doing for existing replicas. And uh, as I said, Maria backup is already available on ARM too. So restoring and copy back and all those things will be uh, possible. So you just take a backup from master or, or whether you take it from master or replica, whatever is the uh, thing which you have been using and restore it. And 
uh, just start boot an instance on ARM and you know that uh, instance will then start acting as one of the extra replica for the existing cluster. That way you can boot more replicas and what we suggest after that is probably you should add them to your load balancer and start directing your queries. This is a, like a stopgap step where you could now start evaluating whether ARM is you know, kind of you know to get a con confidence that uh, is ARM able to perform to the stage which you are looking for. I'm sure it would be and this is not this being an async, async uh, replication it is not getting affected uh, that you know if your ARM servers are fast enough they will help you produce the better throughput and of course once you are convinced about it you can actually go ahead boot your standby master on ARM and do a switch over again since uh, most of these things are not <laughs> Uh, you know uh, pr the protocols which we have been talking about whether it's been log or galera are not uh, processor dependent so there's no issues at all and uh, you know so uh, the pro uh, so basically adding new replicas or switching over or moving to a new setup is as good as just whatever strategy or whatever protocol you have been using for old days is the same thing nothing nothing changes there so isn't that simple indeed it is right so most of the people from, uh, first uh, you know whenever, whenever we spoke to them first time they said oh migrating to arm what is it what would it take what are the problems and all those things and i think it is pretty simple uh, arm is just a different processor come from the same little indian family so it shouldn't be an issue <clears throat> No, but of course there are open issues and challenges. These are not like uh, hurdles, but something which you should keep in mind when you evaluate because I'm sure most of the user will first evaluate and then they will accept some things. So we want to make sure that uh, for a fair comparison, you are aware of these uh, important things. Now, if you are booting an ARM instance on a different cloud provider, then you should keep a watch on it because <clears throat> your different you know sometime your local cloud provider may not provide arm instances and if you are uh, if you want to add a different cloud provider then uh, you know uh, you may actually think oh well should i do it and then uh, there could be an approval process and all so that's that's the first thing you should remember whether your provider provide it or not <clears throat> then the cross cloud moment is if it's going to happen then the data has to be secured most of the time the local data on data center even though it is suggested to use secured communication but uh, sometimes user do use a normal uh, communication so, but when you are going to have a cross uh, cloud moment make sure your data is secured uh, booting ARM instances in different AZ so that also needs to be uh, kept in mind that sometime you know uh, the cloud provider may provide it but as we said uh, not all cloud providers is providing ARM instances in all AZ maybe that will change um, as, as and when the more and more machines get added but yes so if in case you are going to spawn across AZ then make sure you understand what effect it has on the overall system replication latency could be higher again because of the uh, way the things would get placed there could be increased latency because if your application is located in one az or some some part of the place which was closer to the old setup and now your new setup is at a different place then uh, the latency could increase um, then reconfiguration of backup if you are going to continue using it and do make sure uh, mobile most of the common uh, tools and scripts are uh, sorry common tools are already available uh, if you have anything which is custom uh, tools or scripts then uh, check them out whether they are actually uh, present on ARM but on contrary what do you achieve as we already said cost saving of average uh, 50 percent you know a lot of user wanted to go and set up something in geo distributed fashion which was not possible before but now that you have this extra thing you could also explore that there are increased replicas with more redundancy uh, there are users who have like hundreds and thousands of uh, read replicas now just either they can reduce the cost or imagine that they can just double their capacity instead of 100 replicas they will now have 200 replicas this include flexible uh, flexible topologies right so you could actually um, ha have a dedicated replicas just for backup purpose which probably was not possible because of the restrictive things uh, you are adopting to a new improving technology where more number of cores are there and it is just supposed to improve further uh, you know as and when more things get added and all that without affecting of course the end user uh, and stability and uh, the good part is uh, you know most of the data generating devices are already on ARM so having the data processing device like databases on ARM would also make it 
complete so you could actually have host everything under a single thing more and more uh, applications and softwares are now taking advantage of this extra uh, compute power and cost advantage and moving things to ARM including big data applications so it could be really helpful so with that uh, we will now open the session for Q&A I hope you have understood at least got the basic idea uh, that moving or migrating to ARM is pretty straightforward and what advantage it has and again I would like to thank our organizer and sponsor for making this possible you can remain connected we have a blog and there is also a dedicated MariaDB Zulip channel MariaDB on ARM and you can of course follow the tweet thank you